Hi, this is Jim Gibson. Thank you for joining me today on my channel. Really appreciate it. And today I'm going to talk about something that in some people's minds when it comes to IT, especially when it comes to cabling, they're going to say that's not the way it's done. <laughs> It's controversial. I've heard those comments. I've heard them a couple times. But let's talk about some things that's going to help you to be more profitable, help you to have a professional installation. It's going to help you with your IT people. It's going to help you with accounts receivable. <laughs> okay? So we're going to talk about some. First, we're going to start the old way of doing things. Now, I'm not talking about wire wrapping. <laughs> Someone was actually showed me the other day how they did wire wrapping, had a little tool or something, and little things were sticking out from a uh, system that uh, AT&T put in in this old building. <laughs> this has been out since the 40s or something, and they were doing wire. Oh, the silly, the silliness, silliness. Well, this is an old way of doing things, old way of cabling buildings. And I mean, this is ancient way of cabling buildings. Now, just to give you a background, okay, I've been in IT for, oh gosh, so many decades and decades. But in particular, my company did a lot of cabling all throughout the United States, every single state, every year. And we had thousands of customers and we did thousands of installations and we did them all over the place. And I do remember this one large installation. We had uh, probably oh, hundreds and hundreds of drops, okay? So it was a large installation. If we did it the old way, we'd still be there doing it and we would have lost money. If you do it the way I'm going to suggest, okay, that works absolutely fine. And people tell me all the time that they use this and they saved money and, and there's positive things and everything else about this. So let's talk about that. The old way. The old way is to put jacks in and do it in such a way that jack one is there, jack two is over there, jack three is over there, jack four is over there, jack five is over there. And we're going to take the end of the cable and we're going to take a sharpie and we're going to label it one. And my guys used to do one and then they would skip three inches and do one and skip three inches and do one because you may end up cutting off the end of the cable and stuff like that. And that's how they would do it. Then they would do two and two. That's time consuming, man. That's a waste of time. I'm going to tell you a way it's a lot better. But then the people who disagree with me, I, I know they're still not doing wire wrapping. <laughs> that's a way they used to connect jacks years ago. Or using the old jacks that had uh, little uh, screw terminals. You know, you'd, you'd strip the wire, you'd wrap it around the, the terminal, and then you tighten it down. Yes, they actually did that. I actually did that when I first was in the industry back in the 80s. That's how I actually did it, because that's all you had before you had the punch down jacks and modular jacks that could fit up to six outlets in, a, in just one faceplate. That's an improvement, and it works great, as you know, because you're probably using it now, because I don't think they sell any terminals, screw terminal jacks anymore, but they did. They used to have RJ45s and RJ11s with screw terminals on them. Thank God they don't anymore, because that could take a lot of time, and it could have a lot of problems. So there's a new way of doing it, <laughs> and it's not putting the jacks in order. It's what I do, and I've done for decades now since I have invented this product, I've done this for decades, and, and uh, what I used to do was jack one, jack two, jack three, write the number on there. I don't do that anymore. You know what I do now? I just pull the cable. I pull all the cable down to the locations where the jacks are going to be. I make sure I have enough space, and I pulled enough cables that in the data room, there is enough bringing down the cable from the ceiling and everything else so you can patch it in the back of the patch panel. Then I patch it into the back of the patch panel. I do really nice, clean installations. The cable's nice and clean and organized. And it looks fantastic, you know, and it looks very professional. But I haven't numbered any of my jacks. So how do you find the jack? <laughs> Here's the genius of the thing. First of all, a lot of people say, well, I'll just tone them out. Good luck with that. When you're dealing with hundreds of jacks, you're going to sit there and tone each port. And then you have to keep track of the ports that you've already labeled. So you got to tone, oh, this is it, I think, maybe. Or is it the one to the right? No, it might be the one to the left. Where's that tone coming from? That's what happens when you deal with Cat 6 and above. That it bleeds over easily into other jacks. Tone and Probe was made for Category 3, 5E type of things. You can use it for 6, but it's going to take you forever to tone and probe out hundreds of ports at a time. That's just going to take a lot of time. So what I do is I pull the cable and then I 
put the jack on the wall. You can uh, even set finish where I put the faceplate up there and everything else. It's all ready to go. Then I, I go to the data room and I punch everything down, irrespective of where that cable came from. Now, uh, sometimes, and I remember this big install, they had an east wing and they had a west wing. Well, we separated them according to east and west, okay? Uh, but beyond that, we did not mark any cables and we did not separate them and we just punched them down. And talk about punching down. Man, we've punched them down for days. <laughs> How do you identify all those? How do you identify where jack one is? So you can write on the floor plan. Jack one is uh, patch panel uh, D. Uh, port 5. <laughs> it's just too tedious. It takes you forever. It takes you just as much time to do this as it does to pull the cable and put the jack on the wall. So you don't want to do that. It's just a waste of time. I don't do it anymore. And I know a lot of people say, well, that's the official way to do it. And they have special devices that put serial numbers on the cables. No one cares, man. No one cares about serial numbers on cables. They're not going to take your, uh, your part uh, apart. They're just not going to do it. It doesn't happen, okay? Uh, and I know I'm going to get all the hate speech and all. I welcome it. Please send it to me. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, but what I do is I just punch everything down and then I use what's called the cable identifier. So uh, let me get back a little bit. So if it's on the east side, I separate that from the west side or the north side or the south side or things like that. I do those type of separations. You don't have to, but I do them anyway. And then I, I put in all the patch panels and I name, name the patch panels alphanumerically. I, so the first patch panel is A, B, C, D, E, F. I go all the way down. And that job in, in LA that I did that was hundreds of cables, man, it's, it, it takes you forever just to even do the, uh, to dress the cable down nice and neat. Uh, it takes you forever to do that, to do all the punching down and everything else. Now here's the genius of it, okay? is I use this thing called the cable identifier, okay? So it has a place you put in two AA batteries in the back. You don't need a lot. It's just a power supply, man. But all you're gonna do is light LEDs. It's not gonna test the cables or anything else. You're just going to identify them. So I give this to the technician who's out on the floor. After we're done cabling everything and face plates are on and everything else, we haven't labeled anything. So he takes this, he plugs it in at his location, and then what happens is, is I take these little LEDs, and there's 24 to a pack, it's, some, it's IT, it's always 12, 24, 48, uh, 96, it's always in those things of 12. <laughs> so there's 24 LEDs here, and they're professionally made, and they have nice tops on them here, they're very rugged, they're not going to fall apart. You can't wiggle the LED. It's encased in material here. They're very sturdy. And I like the fact that there's a little bulge on top because no matter what angle they're in, you can always see the light because it, it spreads the light out. So we've got 24 of these and I fill up all the patch panels. Now, when I first originally did this, um, we filled up a lot of patch panels with this. So I had the power supply with the technician on the floor. And I would say to the technician, push power, that's the term we used to use, push power. And he would plug it in and he'd be sitting there listening on his cell phone or on a radio. We always use radios, it was a lot uh, quicker. And then I would see instantly an LED light up in the whole field of 10 or 15 patch panels, okay? I'd see that thing light up and I would say, it's on uh, port uh, D5. And then he would sit there with his labeler and he would write capital D, five. And then he would take that and he'd stick it right there on that jack. And then I would pull that LED and I'd put it aside. Now, after I've been doing this for an hour and I'm doing all these LEDs and all, I can look at my patch panel and I can see how many more I have to do. And now if I end up with an extra LED, it's still sitting there in the patch panel, I know something's wrong. Either I didn't punch it down right in the back or it's somewhere else out there hidden behind some some supplies or equipment or a desk or something. So I knew how much my progress one was one way. And at the same time, I am not using a tone and probe, which is great when you have cat three or cat five E, but not category six and above. There's too much bleed over on that. But these LEDs were instant, just like that. I could identify. I estimated on a 24 port patch panel that you'd save about 30% in labor. 
Uh, now, the more patch panels you have, there's bigger savings. It could take days to identify jacks if you're not using a cable identifier. Now, once that person out in the office area uh, was told which port on which patch panel and he labeled it, then what he would do is he would come back and he'd say pulling power, pushing tester. And so he would pull out the power and then he would push in the remote portion of the test equipment. In the data room, you'd have the, the test equipment right there on the rack and you'd plug it in and it would take a few seconds and everything else and then it would work and then everybody would be happy. Every single jack, it gets labeled and tested and it has to pass. Now, how does the IT person find the labeling for that jack? Well, you got a floor plan, man. You write it on the floor plan. You know, you write D5. So he knows, and then you know what we used to do? You know, a lot of times we would laminate these floor plans and put them up on the wall. I don't even recommend doing that because if they add an extra jack now, you got to laminate a floor plan, man. That really sucks. So what I would do is we'd actually get those big 36 inch uh, things where you put posters in and we'd put the floor plan behind that after it was all labeled. So D5 goes right on to the 36 uh, inch, three, three foot by two foot, I think they are. Things that you can get anywhere and they're just flimsy type of um, frames that, that people put in posters. It's a poster frame. And so the person can go over there and they can, they can say, oh, uh, Joey's uh, cube has uh, port uh, D5 in it. Oh, it's no problem. So all they do is they plug in D5 to the patch panel, route it to the switch port that determines what, what Do Joey gets at his desk. Simple as that, easy. <laughs> but when you number them, one, two, three, four, and then the data people call you up and say, I would like another jack right there between one and two. What do you do? 1.1, and then you have to label it 1.1, and then you have to pick out where it's at on the patch panel. No, this is the easiest thing, and this is simple. How many go backs have I had? Zero, because I test every single jack, every single jack. And I tell my people, I say, look, there are no go backs. We guarantee this for 15, 16 years. There's no big deal guaranteeing it for 15 years, unless you take the jack apart. That jack's gonna work to the day you die or the building burns down. Okay, so I, I had no problems guaranteeing it. And, and we'd tell them, hey, if you got a problem, don't open up the jack, just call us. We wanna know where our problems are so we don't continually do this at other installs. But man, the time savings was phenomenal on that big job. Now I can take that money and I can stick it in my pocket as a business owner, right? You could do that because I'm bidding against other people who are doing one, two, three, four, five. And I know that's the official way to do it. Well, there's a lot of things that used to be official, like screw jacks, you know, with the little screw terminals and you have to strip the wire off and wrap it around and tighten it down. So what? It's just an, another way to do it. And it's a newer way and it's a better way. It's a cleaner way. And it's a, it saves you a ton of money this way. This thing is gonna pay for itself within one patch panel, okay? And uh, I would buy one for each person that has a, a service vehicle and make sure they have enough LEDs to do it this way. Don't allow them to do it the old way because that's costing you money. Remember, you're paying them the labor. And if they can only do uh, you know, one patch panel a day, uh, the old way, they can at least do two the new way or more. So it saves you a lot of time. I get a lot of people that love these things. I've sold thousands of them all throughout the world. I sold these things. So the bottom line is, you know, you just put the jacks in, Dress it in nice and neat, nice and clean. Don't worry about toning. Toning is a waste of time. Take you forever. You imagine having 100 jacks and you have to tone 100 times and then, oh, did I tone one? Uh, I don't know, I think I toned one. Oh, I have to go through one, two, three to realize that it's, it's the fourth one and the one, two, three has already been toned and identified. No, that's a pain in that. I just pull the, the plugs out. Once I identify it and I see the red light on, I pull it out, I tell the technician on the floor, the number and the alphanumeric code, and then I'm done. And uh, that just saves a ton of time. I'm not redoing toning. Toning was great years ago. It's difficult today. Uh, with the latest, greatest Cat 6 and above, it gets a little difficult, a lot of bleed over. 
So when all this is said and done, you have all this extra money. Again, you could pocket it, put it in your pocket. That's up to you. I don't care. Uh, or you can say, hey, when we do this other job, rather than taking X amount of time per jack, we can cut our time back and we can give half of that to the customer at a lower price Then you're going to beat your competitors. So you're going to spend less time in labor and you're going to beat your competitors. <laughs> I should be selling this for a lot more than I do. Thank you for your time. Again, this is the combo kit. It comes with 24 LEDs and one power supply. And if you need more LEDs, then you can order additional LEDs. But these are professionally made, manufactured, everything else, and they're like heavy duty. You can throw these all over the place, throw them at people, anything you want. Uh, and they still work because of the way they're made um, with the materials that are placed around the LED. You have a great day. Thank you for watching my video. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And we have more ideas in the future that can save you money if you're a commercial cabling. Now, if you're just cabling a house, do it any way you want, man. Just two or three jacks, no big deal. You have a great day. Bye.